Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we'll have, I think this is uh, going to be a very short lecture, if I'm not mistaken. And then let's spend the rest of our time, uh, if you want to ask questions, I think guest speaker, and if you want to share some of your insights, please do so. No, we encourage that. Let's make this informal and, and light and more of a, a learning interactive experience for all of us, okay? So introduce ko lang very quickly yung ating uh, special guest. Uh, he just actually arrived from Macau 2 a.m. this morning. At pinagtrabaho na natin siya. Ganyan siya kabait. Okay. Naka, he finished his master's degree in counseling and psychotherapy at the University of St. Joseph in Macau. And currently, he is a PhD student uh, in the University of Macau, kung saan kami galing. Kasama ko yung isa naming research assistant. Ah, research assistant. Uh, isang uh, kasama namin sa lab, sa research lab, si Mary. Um, researcher din ng ating guest speaker sa Global and Community Mental Health Research Group sa Macau. He was a former faculty member ng uh, Angeles University Foundation sa Pampanga. At sobrang sarap niya magluto ng sisig. Pinatikim niya sa amin. Uh, he also introduced me to Chance the Rapper. Um, <laughs> Sobrang bagets pa yung ating guest lecturer. Kaya, ano, uh, yung kanyang finish line, ang current theme song ng buhay ko ngayon by Chance the Rapper. Um, yung kanyang, he, he will be presenting parts of his master's thesis no, for us this afternoon. And his master's thesis was actually picked up by the Macau Daily Times. No, yung uh, jari, jari doon sa Macau. I think it was in the, in the front page of the, of the newspaper. Kasi napaka-importante no, yung pag-uusapan about... Um, the, the dark side, sabi ko sa inyo, of uh, social support uh, for domestic workers in Macau. No? So without further ado, let's give him a very warm welcome. I think uh, one of his very few times niya ta dito sa, sa UP, kaya let's, let's give him the love, si Mr. Norman Mendoza. Thank you, Norm. Thank you very much, Ton. Chance the rapper. <laughs> um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Norman Mendoza. And... Um, like what Ton had already mentioned, I'm a PhD classmate at University of Macau. Um, for today, I believe this is your uh, Sikoloi Yang uh, uh, Phil Psych class. But if you don't mind, we will be um, moving in and out of the, the vernacular, so English. And, and, and I also ask for permission from Ton to do that, so uh, we will start. Um, in a nutshell, what, are, what we are going to talk about would be um, the not so usual effect of uh, social network support or social support in general. For example, we, we know later we'd see literature that tells us more social support, actually uh, the literature in psychology and even in public health and mental health is very rich in informing us that the more social support someone has, the healthier they get. And later we will show um, how the mechanism of how this uh, social support um, help people in terms of coping, and in, ter in terms of uh, improving and uh, developing their health and mental health, all right? So um, we have to put context uh, to the discussion points that we will have. In terms of uh, globalization and labor migration, there's a surge of uh, mi migrant workers that has developed, and uh, Filipinos is one of the contributors of of this uh, globalization of migrant work. So from 173 million, it increased to 244 million. This is only over the past 15 years. And uh, of which 150 million of these 244 are labor migrants, which means they are attracted by pull factors of a host country. Let's say Hong Kong would be attracting Filipinos to work there because Hong Kong pays more. Um, now, um, Norman, how about the other 94? Uh, they are the ones that are now currently being um, uh, discriminated, perhaps, um, because they are refugees. These refugees coming from Syria, you know, victims of war. And you know about the heated conversation about what is going on in the US now with Donald Trump being in the administration. So they are the more vulnerable one, the 94 million. So most of the literature with labor migrants are very scarce, and most um, uh, studies that deal with the migration study refugees, okay, or victims of, 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 of war and oppression or discrimination of religion. So the other 150 million 
um, not much literature or work has been done with them. Uh, in short, two out of three migrants are labor migrants. But we want to, again, uh, narrow it down to specific people, and we're going to be specific among domestic workers. So domestic workers are known to do 3D jobs. And what are 3D jobs? They're known to be dangerous, uh, dirty, and degrading. And these jobs are the type of jobs that the locals will not do. Because if you're a local, in, for example, in the Middle East, or in Singapore, Hong Kong, or Macau, um, they will not do this kind of job because they are locals, they have the IDs, the government is uh, obligated to give them jobs that could further them in their, their career or money-wise. But that is not the case among labor migrants. Also, pagka nag migrate na tayo, like Filipinos, for example, they are exposed or we are exposed to migration stress leading to poorer health and overall mental health as well. So substantial evidence shows that migration stress is linked with adverse consequences to health and mental health. Um, this is especially true among low-skilled and female migrant workers. It's interesting because they label them low-skilled, low but they actually can do more than what we can do. They can just leave one, one domestic worker at home in, for three hours and then he's done. Um, there's some, an anecdotal part of this presentation would be um, we, we did, we've done qualitative analysis. After this work, we, we go to the community and work with them, and they give us um, stories about if they do part-time, which is illegal, if they do part-time and they are hired for three hours, the, from, from a mess, it simply becomes like a, a, a parang tatlong uh, room hotel uh, attendees ang naglinis doon sa bahay nila. So if you have a mom, I have, my mom is like that. My mom cleans my stuff. Pagka madumi yung, when I was in high school and college, tapos sabi ko, ma, nasan yung ganito, ganyan, ganyan, because they really would fix it. And that's what the domestic workers do. Um, they are known, and um, statistics tells us that they are 53 million worldwide. And the latest, this is a latest estimate by the ILO, or the International Labor Organization. Most of them would be in highly developed countries. Um, because they, there are many still working in the Philippines as domestic workers, but they'd rather go to another country because they would compensate them twofold or threefold. Where do they work? Private households, often without clear terms of employment and excluded from the scope of labor legislation. So you might contend, ah, we have to protect them with specific rules and regulations, but how would you, there's no bandy clock, you know, in the household of the host country. They just they don't go and sit in, and then being, May kwento pa nga sila sabi na nakakaya naman kasi kung stay in ako. So there are two types of domestic workers in general. Stay in and stay out. Stay in, they sleep with the employer. They, they have one day off. Stay out, they start at 8, finish at about 6. Sometimes even later than that. For the stay in, sabi nila, nakakaya naman kasi kung kahit tapos na yung oras ko, mayroon silang inaayos, tumutulong na ako. Those are still isolated cases. You know, sometimes gigisingin sila in the middle of the night. To, to work. What are their challenges? They're often face very low wages, excessively long hours, no guaranteed weekday of rest, and are vulnerable to physical, mental, and sexual abuse or restrictions on freedom of movement. Minsan sabihin kahit uh, day off, or for example, uh, Chinese New Year recently was um, in Macau, and it's being observed. Three special non-working holidays. If you make someone work, you pay them three times. Um, some are lucky they are the employers would give that, some won't. And they will not complain because they'd rather do that than to lose their jobs and go back home. They'll say, ah, pinapaaral ko pa kasi, panganay ko, things like that. So, in a nutshell, dom domestic workers comprise a significant part of the global workforce in informal employment and are among the most vulnerable groups of workers. Um, because of what we've said already a while ago. Now, this is uh, the part that I want perhaps all of us to reflect on. This is the stress buffering hypothesis proposed to us by Cohen and Wills. They, this is a seminal work. Um, when you cite Cohen and Wills, this is really the beginning of uh, the, the social support and how it affects health and mental health. So it shows us in this paradigm, right? It says social support can intervene by providing necessary social resources to prevent a stress appraisal response. So it's a prevention. It can act as a prevention. Or by reducing 
or eliminating the impact of stress appraisal by providing a solution to the problem. So it acts both as a prevention and a cure. And how does that work? We see, this, we, we see it from this diagram, right? We, it says there's a potentially stressful event. And then there's a cognitive appraisal of the process. Let's say you lost your tuition fee. Um, or, or you're holding some money and then you right? That's the potential stressful event. And then you'd think, oh my God, where I'm, san ko kukunin? Where will I get the money to, to use for that? And then um, a friend could tell you, oh, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that. And in the appraisal process, pwede nilang sabihin sa'yo na, ah, may solution, so you don't get stressed. In case, in case the person around you were not able to tell you, ay, uh, it's really problematic that you lost 10,000. Then the event is appraised as stressful. So now it happened already. So the prevention didn't work. Sometimes it does. Most of the time, it doesn't. Now, how, how would be the process of curing, quote unquote, air quotes? Social support may be, may be also able to reappraise. There would be a reappraisal process. So it says, may result in reappraisal, inhibition, of maladjusted responses or facilitation of adjustive counter responses. So emotional link, physiological response or behavioral adaptation. Uh, what can happen? So naisip mo na no, it's problematic. But they can still be there to provide you other forms of support, for example, emotional support. So you would not think, I'm, I'm alone with this caveat or problem. You'd say, ah, uh, this is really a problem. It's something I should be sad about, but I have friends with me and they understand my situation. So that allows better uh, um, well-being overall. So what happens? It will not develop into any illness and or illness behavior. So instead of person, a person trying to have suicidal thoughts or, or non-suicidal infliction of, of, of harm to themselves, it could be appraised. And this is known to be predicting health. So um, there, are, there are studies done wherein they just analyzed social support and health. And they found that people with higher social support, they tend to have higher health, higher, higher uh, assessment of quality of life, self-report depression, lower symptoms. So if you have friends, very good friends, that just simply means you're healthier. However, again, we find uh, uh, counterintuitive results. So we say here, I added this just this morning because I want to tell you these four types of support. Um, this is a work, uh, again, a seminal work by House in 1981. He wrote this book. He identified four specific types of support. Emotional support, um, instrumental support, uh, informational, and appraisal support. Uh, how would you answer this question if I ask you? It, you'll just answer a number in your head. You don't even have to say it out. How many people do you have that you can confide you know, your, more, your most um, serious problems or things that you care the most. You can start doing this by thinking about names and then just counting those names. Kanino ka open na sabihin mo yung even your weaknesses or discussing important matters? Think about names. It can include your mom, your dad, friends, brother, sister, uncle, Ken. Ken. Uh, th this is the the, uh, the most uh, powerful, the most powerful perceived social support. So, do you have the number? Do you have the number with you? Yes. Okay, I'm not gonna be David Blaine and guessing which number it is, but um, who among you has five or five or lower? Five and below. Five and below. Let's see those hands. All right, six and higher. Six and higher. Six and higher. All right. How how many, sir? Uh, six. 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 Uh, the reason why I have a cutoff of five is because you don't have much to, you don't want to share every, you know, serious problem with like thir a group of 30. You only sometimes can relate to specific people. And these specific people provide us different types of support. Specifically, that person that you're talking to is providing you emotional support because they, you can confide to them. The other person is instrumental, so providing you instrumental support. Uh, you message him, sabi mo, ah, late na ako sa klase. Uh, and then he say, ah, nandito ako sa may ano, hintayin na kita. Instrumental. It helps you. Ah, hindi pa ako nakapagbayad ng ganito. Ah, nasa SM ako ngayon, pambayad muna kita, bigay mo na lang mamaya. Instrumental support. 
instrumental support. Um, um, you sat in a class, you did not talk for two hours, and then you say, ay, baro ko na hata nang hining ako. And then your friend give you a mint. Instrumental, being instrumental. Um, pinahiram ka na wala yung 10,000 mo, sabi niyo, ah, papatayin ako ng tatay ko. Uh, borrowed you 10,000, instrumental. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and then inf informational support tells you other ways. For example, um, uh, how to pass a subject. Let's say, ah, sinong prof mo sa ganito? And then you'd say, ah, si ano, ay, ito ang gawin mo. Ang gusto niyan, ganito, ganito, ganyan. Bakit? Eh, natay ko na yan dati eh. Gives you specific information. So this, again, allows you to think better, to plan better. And the last one is appraisal. It's like um, they, they tell you how to uh, appraise a specific um, uh, stimulus or an experience. Sabi niya, ay, feeling ko nagalit si Sir Ton sa akin kasi ganito, ganyan. And then, a former student of Professor Ton or Sir Ton would say, no, ganun lang talaga si Sir Ton. Uh, that's his way of showing care. <laughs> So that could be that could be a means of providing appraisal support. Because we might think, oh, it's a serious problem, but maybe it's not. But those are the four specific types of support that you could provide. And also, social network support tells you, oh, na mumut la kana, oh, pumapayat kaya ta, oh, your your lips are dry, oh, your eye bags are darker now. These things yourself will not tell you, you know. Even if you look in the mirror, yourself cannot detect kasi nasanay ka na, na, you see your face every day. But your parents, your friends can tell you, Uy, bakit parang napansin ko nag yellow ka? And then they realize it was jaundice. This is a true example that I just experienced last weekend. I was testing for HIV and STI among domestic workers. And then she complained, I'm turning yellow. And then the next participant is her friend. And the, her friend said, yes, I, you see, I kept telling you. And so that, that friend told her that she's turning yellow and she's been researching. She's been researching. Is this hepatitis? Is this jaundice? Why are my eyes not yellow but my skin is? So she is in need of like health care, like primary health care. Go to the hospital, get checked up. They, they, they run, they'll run like uh, blood results or bl test blood or, or urine. You know? But she was turning yellow. She did not recognize that before the friend told her. So these are the types of support. So they provide you also life meaning, provide emotional support, provide practical. So these are the instrumental one. Feedback is the one that, that, that I was giving you. Pumapayad ka na. Or you're gaining weight can also be. And that could mean you're getting less sleep. And that could mean because you're depressed. But you're functioning. But those are possibilities. Uh, too long of an introduction, but the last one would be the effect vary from type, source, and recipient. There's no universal way to provide support. Let's say, ah, Norman is good in providing informational support. And that would be effective to one and all. Uh, wrong answer. Why? Because it depends on what the type is. The type means, is it informational, instrumental, emotional, appraisal? The source, me. And the recipient, you. So it depends on three things. Despite the breadth of knowledge on the importance of social support to mental health, the relationship between the two remains complex because the mechanisms through which social support directly influence or buffer stressors to mental health depends on the type and the source of support. The effects may have differences on gender and socioeconomic status. We would find that out later. I, keep, I, I think I told this example to Tons too many times. When I'm being stressed, I said, I will always... Uh, mentioned Peggy Thoits, who authored this paper, and he said there are two specific. Alam na natin yung types of support, diba? What are the four again? And the last one, up appraisal. The source, dalawa lang. Um, emotionally similar or experientially similar others, and loved ones. Okay, loved ones includes your family and uh, your specific loved ones, if you have, uh, brother, sister, aunt, uncle. Emotionally similar others is the person next to you, uh, your classmate, your friend, who exactly know what you're experiencing. And the literature tells us and guides us that depende kung sino siya, depende doon yung effective na type of support. 
let's say, and but this is again not universal. Your mom is better in providing instrumental than emotional support. I'd repeat that. Your mom is better in providing you instrumental more than emotional support. I'm not saying moms are not good in listening to you. They are, in fact, but they are better in providing instrumental support. Mas effective pag sinabi ni mami mo na, okay, let's talk to your professor. Or, okay, let's bring, let me bring you to class. Okay, let me help you buy stuff so that you can finish that project. That's more helpful than your mom listening to you talk about your problems. The reverse is true for your experientially similar others or the people sitting next to you. Mas yung kaibigan mo na nasa tabi mo ngayon is, is better in listening to your emotional problems. So emotional support is better provided by your classmate or by the person who has an experientially similar experience. Um, more than instrumental. But again, they provide both. They're just better in providing others. Kasi one way that this will not be working is your mom you so much, right? And if you share emotional problems, it's your mom cannot control but also feel the same like, like you are. Or pwede pagalitan ka pa. Eh, but kasi lagi kita, sabi mo, no, ma, I think I'll be, I'll be flunking my grades in subject X and Y. Your mom would be like, um, I'm not saying all moms are the same. But your mom can be like, uh, eh, kaya paano naman kasi hindi ganyan? Lagi kita nakikita. Nakahilata ka lang dyan, eh. Kaya, your mom can say that, right? Instead of providing you yung pakinggan ka na. Kung kay, kay sa kaibigan mo ginawa yun, ano sabihin ng friend mo? If you said, oh, I think I'll flunk two of my subjects this semester, what would your friend say? <laughs> you give high five. You say, yes. Ako nga tatlo eh. You know, the other friend is like, I, I'll get three. But your mom, pagalitan ka, right? But if your mom can give you emotional support. I would, I, after reading this, I said, when I become a parent in the future, I would provide instrumental support more. Because maybe I already provide emotional, but then I would provide instrumental more. Okay, let's, uh, done with the introduction. And I hope that provided context with the study so that later on in the discussion, we just, one snap, we're done. Um, we did this study in uh, uh, 2013. I think uh, we started in May, finished in September. Um, we did snowball sampling with 261 female domestic workers in Macau. We distributed pamphlets because they're so difficult to reach. So difficult to reach. They're only available on Sundays. When I reached 261, my supervisor told me, Professor Imelu Merdeno, told me, okay, Norma, maybe you stop now. I think um, it's now time to analyze. 37.5% uh, were between 35 to 44 years old, which means one third of the sample are aged 35 to 44. This age is very, uh, it's, it's a high risk for uh, different diseases, cardiovascular, diabetes, sometimes even cancer. Almost two thirds of the respondents graduated from high school. So we're talking about um, relatively fluent people, relatively educated people. Half of the sample was married or partnered, nearly 40% earned monthly salaries equivalent to 375 US dollars or 500 US dollars. Six measures were used, so we asked them, we assessed uh, depression, anxiety, and uh, uh, somatization, and also PTSD symptoms. So we used PCL, C, and all of these were translated forward and backward. Uh, perhaps you, do you know about the forward and backward translation? Yes, we used that one. And so this was our framework. We're trying to assess their post-migration stress. What we did was we compiled a free listing of um, stressors. So they say, um, a few examples would be. Can you give them an idea how much in pesos your salary? Oh, it's around 22 to 26,000 pesos. A month. A month. 22 to 26. It's not much, actually. It's not really. Yes. Yes, in, in context. 22 to 26,000. It's not much. Yes. Right. Um, that's that's um, the next pathway because if they're only earning 22 to 26,000, again, I'm going to use peso as currency. They'd pay uh, 8,000 for the house. Uh, no, 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 6,000 for the house, and that's just a bed space. 
um, and then they're, um, pag stay in sila, some of them are fed by the employers. Some of them are not, uh, even if they're stay in. Uh, so kung pakainin man yung uh, ano na lang, leftovers. Or, but this is not a romanticized kind of experience. Of, some of them actually live okay. I don't want my, the domestic workers in the Philippines to say, Norman, you went to the Philippines and told them how bad our experience is in Macau. In fact, it's not. But again, the, the living allowance, I, I can just share to you how much is left. And the answer is almost none. Um, they are paying debts. Some of them get sick. They go to their employer. They give the, their passport to the employer and they say, I'm going to work for you. Please lend me money. I need to go to the hospital. Ah, so bad. They have to pawn their passport so that they will get the money. And the passport is an assurance to the employer that they will not go anywhere so that they can get treatment. And then when they go to the hospital, people are speaking in Cantonese. They cannot even get the culturally specific type of um, health care that um, unarguably they deserve. You know? So uh, yes, they are earning very few, very few. And so kung, if you have a, uh, it's a case-to-case -case kind of uh, basis. You can contend na, ah, pauwiin na lang natin kasi kahit siguro kikita na lang siya ng mas kaunti sa Pilipinas, she would be healthier in the Philippines. Uh, you'll not believe me if I tell you there's a 59-year-old domestic worker. Yeah, uh, Some, like, I treat them as my lola when I meet them. I'm like, ah, so much things that we need to work on. Anyway, this, mm, mm. So it's less, it's not much. And the savings, very few. But some of them enroll in the Philippine consulate in Macau. Some of them enroll in this LEC, LSE program, it's, which te teaches them from, it was from Ateneo. It's a program of Ateneo that tells, teaches them how to save money so that when they reintegrate, they, they, they plan their way back. Because some of them, umuwi sila at, after 12 years of working in Macau, with no savings whatsoever, because they just keep sending. Um, yes. Yes. Ah, sad, but let's continue. Can social network support buffer post-migration says? This is what we tested quantitatively. So if the people interested in stats, they could be like very interested in listening to it. If not, I'm going to be just passing through. We're going to test if when they experience these post-migration stress, we predict that it would lead to increased anxiety, somatization, all these mental health outcomes would be increasing in terms of symptoms. And then yung social network support, we'll analyze that. Pag ba may mas mataas na social network support, bababa ba yung effect, effect ng stress dun sa mga stressors? Okay. And this is what we found. Um, in terms of correlation, we found that... Uh, so number one is depression. So you would see that it's positive positively correlated, um, which means pag mataas yung social network support, positive yung relationship niya sa depression. So the, the people who reported having higher support from their friends and family um, showed that they have higher symptoms. So we were like, oh, this is strange. And then we ran regression. We ran regression, and then we find also that post-migration stress was significantly associated with all the four, four uh, health outcomes. So, ibig sabihin, yung social network support is already correlating higher to, to the mental health outcomes, and post-migration also. So, we're now, instead of thinking about social support as something that will buffer that stress, what we're seeing now, the trend that we're seeing now, the pattern is that it actually increases it. So, we tested moderation. And we found this. So social network uh, from friends significantly predicts in a positive direction. This is very marginal, 0 0.06. With like maybe 10 more people, that's going to be significant already. So it would, social network from friends would predict that. Uh, the interesting part, though, the, the silver lining is social network support from family was not significantly predicting any of the symptoms. The friends were, but not the family. And we explain this in such a way that maybe because they're migrants, their families are left back home. And again, very minimal kind of support is, is provided. Kasi busy din sila. Hindi pwede sa kanila yung daming time. Kasi busy talaga sila. Uh, Sunday na lang yung day off nila. But some of them are very active in church. They cope in different ways. 
And what we found is this. I'm going to try to simplify this. This is the moderation analysis that we did. Think about these three lines as three specific people. Okay, three specific people. The one with the broken line, like the very thin broken line, these are the ones with um, low social network support. Low social network support. The one with like longer broken lines, uh, moderate social network support. And the one with the solid line, that, that's the, those are the people with a high social network support. And in this uh, figure, in this kind of graph, this x-axis, I don't want to sound like very geometry, but x-axis, uh, no, y-axis. This y-axis is the depression. X is the post-migration stress. And what we find is, tignan lang natin yung high social network, the one with the solid line. Look at the trend of the one in the solid line. The solid line tells us the higher migration stress they have, the higher depression they have. And higher means at 18, dito. Even if they start mostly at the same point. For those with lower social network support, they end up having less depression actually, even if they have higher post-migration stress. With that, which tells you, ah, bab ah, bawasan mo pala mga friends mo. You don't need much support. Because if you get more support, what happens is you have higher depression. Do you understand the graph? So we were all surprised seeing this because we, we didn't really anticipate it being like this. What year, or what year are you again? Sophomores? And what year do you start thesis or a research? December. December? December. Ah, oh, there are some seniors here. Mga next sem. Yes, because um, it, it, it kind of hits you, it blindsides you because linuluto mo na yung discussion mo about, you know, tailoring the discussion to the possible result na effective yung social support. And then, in fact, it's not. So it really blindsided us seeing this. And the, the trend is true for anxiety and much more for somatization. Actually, um, yung rates for somatization is higher. And somatization is feeling um, uh, physical pain with the lack of physical, sim uh, physical, ma physical manifestations of uh, psychological stress. For example, we have participants saying, nangangati daw yung ulo niya pag nakikita niya yung boss, for example. Or we have participants saying, um, sumasakit na yung binti ko, um, but actually I rarely walk. So they are um, stress-induced physical um, sensations or physical manifestations of stress. Do you know uh, Alfred Adler? Di ba meron siyang ganon yung, yung nagsasalita yung parts of the body? Ano uh, tawag dun? But nah, it's in his theory. It's in his theory. Uh, feist and feist. Anyway, you'd, you'd, it's language, body language kind of, if you translate it. I'm sorry? Yes, exactly. Organ dialect, yes. It's like the specific part of the body speaks. But that's very psychodynamic still. But yes, that's somatization. And when we saw that, we tried to explain it, uh, as we always do in research. We tried to explain what happened here.